Hi, I'm Jay. Welcome to the workshop and today we're going to be talking about medical training. So, first of all, a little background about myself, uh, medical-wise. Uh, in my spare time, I am a volunteer rescue medic, which means I cover motorsport events, large public events, stuff like that, and provide medical assistance to the public, uh, as well as um, cutting uh, competitors out of cars and dealing with the injuries that are associated with that at motorsport events. So through that, I've got quite a lot of extensive medical training, which I can also use outside of uh, my voluntary capacity while on our trips. So um, it got me thinking, obviously I'm in a bit of a different position, but the average Joe setting out on this first aid or medical training, whatever you want to call it, normally isn't the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Now as with everything in the Overland community, the level of training uh, and the amount of equipment, uh, which you can see I carry quite a lot of it, will depend on your situation, uh, how many people you travel with, what countries you travel in, how long you go for, or do you go around the world as a, as a full-time um, job, or do you go away on weekend trips or a couple of week, weeks worth of trips at a time. Um, so, this question can't be answered with a simple, yep, yeah, that's the course you need to do, do that and you'll be fine. Uh, I think it's more of a, a gradient. So we're going to start at the bottom um, with what I reckon everyone, not just in the Overland community, but everyone uh, needs. And uh, that is a bare minimum of some kind of first aid training, whether it is just uh, CPR with AED use, um, or a one day first aid at work, I think personally everyone should have some kind of first aid qualification. Again, this is can be used in your workplace, it can be used uh, at your home if one of your family members gets injured, as well as when you're out on the trip on trips um, in the middle of nowhere or even just for a quick weekend break. What you need to keep in mind is a lot of first aid courses base their syllabus on the fact that help is going to be um, quite close at hand. Some first aid courses even depend on a 15 minute response from the local ambulance service for example. Now even certain parts in the UK that's not possible, we're talking rural Scotland, some parts in Wales, um, can an ambulance can be half an hour, 45 minutes away at the worst of times. So things like that you have to bear in mind as well. So I would say the basic overlander, as I'm going to call him, or her, who is taking weekend to week trips solely in the UK, a first aid, normal one, ideally to three day first aid qualification would suffice. Now someone who is going to be travelling in, in a little bit more remote parts, and we're not talking out in the middle of Russia quite so yet, but um, even some of the uh, regular travelling in rural areas of the UK and Europe, we need to start bumping up the skill set a little bit more. Again, pulling back on that, help isn't going to be 15 minutes away, so we might be dealing with our patient a little bit longer. This is where wilderness first aid courses or wilderness first responder courses come into play. Their syllabus is designed around the fact that at that help is going to be from anywhere between one to four or five hours away. These first aid courses uh, are usually held outdoors as well, so they're more tailored towards the injuries that overlanders are going to be looking at. So your your breaks and sprains, your you know your major hemorrhage, plus extended basic life support if someone suffers with a heart attack or something out in the middle of nowhere. Bumping up one notch again, if you're guaranteed to be in places where help is definitely not going to be there within the hour, you need to start looking at more advanced medical training, uh, more first responder training. Now first responder training brings in an, 
a few more techniques that first aiders don't get taught. So you're looking at use of oxygen, you're looking at uh, basic airways, uh, you're also looking at a more of a deeper understanding of what's happening with uh, the human anatomy during certain conditions and how to uh, stabilize, stabilize them patients. You're also starting to take basic OBS, uh, you're, talk, you're, you're taking blood pressures, you're taking uh, SpO2 readings, uh, again, because you're going to be with the patient for a little bit longer. You also start to understand more things about like life-saving techniques such as catastrophic hemorrhage and like I said before, the basic airways, things that can, can keep people alive until further help arrives. So you're going to start using uh, things like tourniquets, hemostatic dressings, uh, chest seals, um, MPAs and uh, OPAs. Now to step up even one more level again, and if you're going to be in places where there's a high risk of injury and you know you're going to be alone, you can start looking at the wilderness first responder. These differ from the standard first responder courses uh, as they're tailored to be obviously in the wilderness. So you're looking at helicopter evacuations and protocols that go along with that, uh, tropical diseases, um, managing dislocations, and again honing your skills even further on basic life support and um, st stabilization techniques ready for when they get to further help. These kind of courses are starting to go towards more you're doing this full time so you're traveling the world constantly you're constantly putting yourself in that position where help isn't really going to be with you very quickly. Now wilderness first responders it is getting quite high top tier level now there's not a, f a lot further you can go from there unless you start getting involved in remote team medics and things that are more kind of um, aimed at providing professional service so you're doing this for a living you know you're you're being a part of an ambulance service or your dedicated medic in a team of um, ex you know exploration specialists or scientific studies to flower oil rigs that kind of thing but if this just starts in to interest you you can go even further so like myself um, I did a basic first aid course uh, and I was looking around to doing more and more courses on this kind of thing when I stumbled across the uh, volunteer service which I'm currently a part of. Now the courses they were providing, A, I was getting free of charge because obviously I'm volunteering my time to help the community and B, they were tailored at someone providing a professional level of service to a patient. Uh, however, you can do these courses off your own back, so the the courses I've completed uh, are part of the FREC framework, which I believe FREC stands for First Responder Emergency Care, don't quote me on that, uh, and it's actually the certification standard that the ambulance services are slowly turning towards because uh, you can start right at the bottom, uh, which is the course that Charlotte has recently completed, uh, which is the FREC level 3 first responder uh, you can, and then you can go up from there so it goes from FREC level 3 first responder to FREC level 3 uh, which is the one I'm currently on um, and then FREC 4 and FREC 5 which is FREC 4 and 5 is, is starting to get towards your, your ambulance technician kind of level uh, and then you can go even further and do 6 and 7 which uh, will allow you to actually do your paramedic um, registration so you can see if you get involved in the voluntary service and actually start using your skills on a day-to-day -day basis almost, uh, not only does it impact on your abilities when on trips, you're also helping out your community when at home. Now the biggest thing is, depending on what course, is depending on what equipment you carry. A lot of what I carry in my bag, and I'll do a video later on on that, uh, it's not appropriate for a basic first aider to carry because if they tried using it on a patient without the proper skill sets you can get into troubles uh, especially if it goes wrong 
So bearing in mind when your skill level increases, the equipment needed to effectively do your job increases as well. So you keep keep that in the back of your head. Also, if you're one of these people that like to travel in big groups, as for example, you might have two couples uh, in two separate vehicles, or even further, um, you see some of the people in America traveling in full teams. You have to ask, does absolutely everyone need to be trained up to wilderness first responder, for example? No, no they don't. As long as you've got more than one, because if that wolf first, first responder is injured themselves, they can't render aid to anyone else, so at least you've got two in a group of five or six, then not everyone has to be trained up to that level. However, everyone should have a basic understanding of first aid and the techniques going on. So everyone should have first aid, for example, with two more appointed um, first responders. Hopefully that's kind of cleared up uh, a little bit uh, and it should definitely be in the forefront of people starting out. Um, you don't want to be caught out in the middle of nowhere with someone have a broken leg or worst case scenario is someone bleeding out uh, and not having the knowledge or the equipment to be able to save that person. So a lot of these courses only take up, especially the basic courses, only take up uh, one day or a couple of weekends uh, and can cost as little as, as, as £200 for a, for a semi-decent course. But even if you never use it, or if you save someone's life one day, to me that's money well spent. So I hope this video kind of makes people think, yes, first aid um, training should be you know, just as high as should I buy a rooftop tent or how high should I go in my suspension or where am I going to go next year. As soon as you get that sorted out, peace of mind that you can look after everyone yourself and everyone that you're with. So until then, see you later.